All right. So, <clears throat> in previous lectures, I talked about word to vec, but in word to vec, each walk in the graph is composed only of named entities that appear together in just a single item. So, in other words, I can say that we are limited to walks that don't go further than distance one from the starting node. And that's the problem because we, you cannot capture the global picture. And in node to vec, we don't have this restriction. So in word to vec, in word to vec, we generate uh, sentences like a, b, c, and d, b, e. But in node to vec we could also get sentences like A, B, and E. So we can capture uh, some global stuff that, uh, that, in other words, I can say that it captures the concepts rather than just very limited, local, restricted, uh, semantic meanings. So if if this is the graph, so in in word to vec, you can go say a b c and then or d b e different moves, but in no to vec you can capture a b and e, and you can go other way as well. So it's a uh, so it doesn't have this restriction anymore. And uh, I just want to talk about the relationship between deep walk and uh, word to vec before I start node to vec. So it makes a random walk to convert a graph into a sequence of nodes. And then we train it using the word to vec model. But, but no two vec that was uh, presented by Stanford in 2016 by guys like Aditya Grover and Yura Leskovec. And the title of their uh, seminal work was uh, No two vec Scalable feature learning for networks. So it uses a combination of DFS. I'm sure um, you're familiar with BFS and DFS in computer science. I mean, uh, those depth first search and breast first search. So no two vec generalizes the deep walk. So what is the goal? The goal is to maximize the likelihood of preserving network neighborhood and design a biased random walk procedure. So the contribution of the node to vec is that they add, they add flexibility in exploring neighborhoods. For example, if you have a graph like this one, I want to to see, just recall what we mean by breast-first search and depth-first search. We have S5 fewer, S6, S9, and finally S8 and S7. And these are connected like this. So this is a good example to see what we mean. So for by breadth first search, which is which is also called homophily symmetry. Homophily symmetry. So we can go 
in these steps of a random walk. But in depth first search, it's a structural symmetry. We can go out a little bit more. So it's a structural symmetry. So we can move like this. We go here and then we go there. So this is the difference between them. And our goal is just to find this, the, the, some parameters that represent the um, word representation. So F is a matrix of, of size V by D parameters. This number of parameters you need to train. And for every source node U, we define some neighborhood, let's say NS of U, which is a subset of your vertices as a network neighborhood of nodes generated through a, a, we call it neighborhood sampling strategy S. So S here refers to neighborhood sampling strategy. So our goal, once again, is just to maximize the log of probability that neighbors of, uh, neighbors of node U, <coughs> given that we have found some representation for U. And uh, we do it for all of the vertices of the graph, but we maximize it over F this representation that we want to we want to find and to make optimization more tractable we have two assumptions so sometimes called conditional independence which factorize the likelihood like the probability that neighbors of u given f of u so because it is simple, we just factorize it. So we use it anywhere, for example, in variational inference, in any context in machine learning, because it's the, the, the simplest way to just um, simplify the problem. And so this is the probability of ni given f of u. So we factorize, we factorize the likelihood to make it simple. And the other one, so the other assumption is that the symmetry in feature space. So a source, source node and a neighborhood node have a symmetric effect over each other in feature space. So the probability of Ni given that you know the representation of a fixed node is just the exponential of f of ni that f of u. You have seen this trick in several different algorithms. For example, uh, I remember Tissini. We use the same trick any or in many different algorithms. So this is just just the dot product, it's a measure of similarity, and the denominator is the sum over them. And first it is, it was inspired by the physicists because they were interested in easing model. So this became a major paradigm for many people, many researchers. Because the more you use a paradigm, the more popular it becomes. And then you suddenly notice that everything is just this paradigm. So we want to maximize so we, over all F that is possible, all of the matrix size of uh, V by D over the sum of minus log of Z of U plus N I in the neighbors of u, f and i, f and i dot f of u. 
And this is the problem because it is expensive to calculate this huge sum exponential of f of u dot f of v for very large graph. That's why we use the techniques uh, like negative sampling to approximate it, as we did for the war 2 vec uh, skip gram and the negative sampling as as you are familiar with that and I've explained in, in the playlist. So now we are ready to optimize it using the stochastic gradient descent. So so everything is now crystal clear. I just need to mention that we have some parameters, some let's say hyperparameters to tune with because you can go from from a fixed node to any other node in several different ways and you can you can say alpha could be 1 over p alpha could be 1 over q alpha could be 1 so alpha pq of t and x is just 1 over p if the distance between t and x is 0. It's 1 if d, t, and x is 1. d, t, and x is 2. It becomes... So if what I want to say is if q is less than minimum of 1 and p, then we are promoting a depth first search. And if p is greater than maximum of 1 and q, we are promoting breast first search. I think that's enough for node to work because it's a very simple algorithm to understand. So now I want to talk about graph sage, which is a kind of graph neural networks, but more mature than previous versions. And it was first introduced in 2018 by the article Inductive Representation Learning on Large Graphs by William Hamilton and Rex Ying and Yuri Leskovic again. So the motivation is that the previous approaches are inherently transductive and do not naturally generalize to unseen nodes. So what I mean, you've trained for G and suddenly uh, some people give you some unseen nodes and then you don't know what, how to handle this problem. So graph sage is a, is a general in the inductive framework. So this one is inductive rather than transductive. So it's an inductive uh, framework to generate node embeddings. So we want, again, you want for each node, we want to represent it by a vector. And we do it by sampling and aggregating features. So graph sage comes from, uh, S comes from sampling. And uh, this one is aggregate. So by sampling and aggregating features from nodes local neighborhood. So first of all, we sample neighborhoods and then we aggregate information from the, from the neighborhoods. For example, we aggregate all the information from the neighborhood. For example, this one is an aggregation. You aggregate all information. This aggregation could be a sum, could be an average, could be a max pooling uh, using LSTM, anything. So after that, you are ready to predict the graph context and label using aggregated information. So the algorithm is is like this, that for k from 1 to k, which is called the depth, the depth of the graph, uh, you go and say, for do it for all nodes in the graph, all nodes in the graph, do it. And then we, we just update for, ne for aggregate uh, for, h u k minus 1 
and for any u in neighborhood of v and then uh, after that you you give it to a feed forward neural networks so this is the feed forward neural networks and then you you train and find your do, those w's and then so here it concatenate with itself which is hk of n of v and then you get hv of k and then you normalize it and finally you after after going out of the loop you finally say that your embeddings is like this but uh, he, but you should solve some uh, you should minimize some loss function and and the loss function that you need to know is for the graph g the loss function is minus log of sigma of z you transpose zv for example mm, So, for example, this is me in the graph. This is my 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 friends in the graph. For example, in Twitter, for example, it, uh, this is for example me, and these are my friends. And the similarity between them is is understood by this. And the other term that you need to know is the hyperparameter. Q is the hyperparameter, which is the number of negative samples that expectation of, because you sample over negative sampling distribution, expectation of log of this sigmoid of minus ZU transpose ZVN. So a node co-occurs near you on a fixed random walk. So this VN is just uh, a random walk that co-occurs with this fixed node U. This is fixed, and this is the random walk. So in other words, I can say that this one enforces that representations of disparate nodes are highly distinct, like contrastive learning, like but it is fully unsupervised. There is no supervision. It's totally unsupervised. And the first one, and the first term, this one encourages that nearby nodes to have similar representations. And the sigma solve the problem. So you have here zero and four and up to one. So the sigmoids is a nonlinear function, and so it encourages the nearby nodes to have similar representations. And, and here, the opposite, enforcing that representation of disparate nodes are highly distinct. So in other words, I can say that we are rewarding positive samples. And we are punishing, we are punishing negative samples. So now we are ready to tune those uh, W's using stochastic gradient descent. Because we have a loss function, now we can use the stochastic gradient descent to find our parameters. And, and that's it. That's, that's the graph sage algorithm. But I want to show it with, with an example. For example, you have, um, you have a, a graph like D, E, and, and G. And in, in a different depth, for example, depths, depths um, two, I can say that this is F, this is F. So this is in K equal to two. 
So the depth of the graph is now for two. But you can fig you can use for all the vertices. You can do the same trick for, uh, for the for all vertices. So the sample.